Good morning, everyone. I'm Tim Coles. I'm the Director of Music and Community here at First United Methodist Church of Pittsburgh. And I have a couple of questions for you today before we begin our worship, uh, before we welcome you and start singing and praying. Uh, the first of which is many of you um, have found us online. If you haven't joined our community physically in person, you may want to connect with us in a different way. And so I'm leaving this link here. This is our email address. And if you would just send an email to that, and it's also in the description of this video, uh, we will put you on our mailing list. So you'll find a lot more information about our church and about our community. And we would love to interact with you in that way and welcome you to our community in that way. The other request I have for today is for pictures. Over the past several weeks, we have asked for pictures from you all, uh, nature pictures. Uh, we've received pictures of your cat or your plant. Uh, this time, we're looking for pictures of you, your face. Um, and we have a couple of themes that we'd like to throw out there for you for the next few weeks. If you have a picture of yourself, your face, or a family member, um, in, in the following themes, this is what we're after. Resting, light, ocean, and gardening. So if you have a picture of yourself or a loved one in one of those settings uh, or one of those themes and you would like to include that in our worship, uh, I will send an all church email out with a link for you to get those photos to us. And so we would really be excited to in include many, many photos from you all with those themes. Again, resting, light, ocean, and gardening. And that's all I have. And so let us uh, start our worship service for today. Welcome. Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Tracy Cox of First United Methodist Church of Pittsburgh, and it is good to be with you this day. At First Church, we are still gathering in our homes for worship, and so I invite you to join along in the chat room that's beside the service going on. That is a great place to ask questions, to introduce yourself, or perhaps even to say hi to someone that you haven't seen in a while. 
Um, if you are watching this at a later time, I invite you to make some comments and add your comments and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Again, welcome to worship. It is good that we are together. May peace and calmness and comfort guard your heart this time of worship. Often when we journey into our worship experience, we use our breath to center ourselves, to connect our mind and our spirit with the innermost part of our soul. That allows us to connect with ourselves and one another in a very special way. We can love more deeply. We can act with compassion toward one another in a different way. Today, you'll hear a beat start to happen in the background with a drum. And I invite you to take a deep breath in and then a deep breath out. You can do that by counting to four or counting to two or whatever it means the most to you. Uh, just sit with yourself as you're hearing the drum beat. Allow yourself to connect in this new way and be centered for what comes afterward. So for all of this, our deepest desire is that you are experiencing the world that God has created with you in it and all of creation in a new and compassionate, exciting way. So join us. The presence of God welcomes us as we are. To all who seek love, she extends her reach. We bring her our questions and our uncertainties. We come when we are hurting and afraid. The weary and the grieving will not be turned away. Righteous anger is received with care. 
In God's embrace, we come to lay our truths bare. In honesty and with authenticity, we meet God and one another. Good morning. I'm Joe Smith. I'm the Director of Spiritual Formation here at First Church. Welcome to Family Time. We're going to start with a prayer of gratitude. Lord, thank you for all we are given, especially the love in the hearts of many. For sun, moon, stars, and sky, family, friends, and fun, and to be able to help others. Amen. Have you ever had to wait for way too long for something that you really, really wanted? I know I have. Here's some actual video footage of me on my way to Disney World when I was five. there yet? No. How much longer? About eight hours. I can't believe we're going to Disney World. I know, it's exciting. Why does Goofy talk and Pluto doesn't? Are we there now? No. How much longer? About seven hours and 59 minutes. I need to use the bathroom. 
So our Bible lesson today is from the Psalms, which is like the Bible's prayer book. And the psalmist prays not only in this psalm, but often. How long, O Lord, do we have to wait? How long will life be like this? How long will the bullies win? How long will sickness be around? How long will people die? How long will I feel sad? Like the psalmist knew that God had promised all these good and wonderful and beautiful things. And then sometimes they didn't happen. And so he wanted to know how long do we have to wait around? You know, that tells us something really interesting about prayer. I think a lot of times we think of prayer as asking God for things, like sitting on Santa Claus's lap or something. But a lot of times, prayer can just be noticing the beauty around us and feeling gratitude and excitement about that. A lot of times, prayer can just say, whoa. And a lot of times... Prayer can feel angry and upset like the psalmist, saying, how long, God, do we have to wait for the goodness and the beauty and the grace that you've promised us? It doesn't seem like it's here. So the psalms can be like permission for you to just communicate with God, to just pray and be open about what you're feeling inside. Maybe you're afraid of the future. Maybe you're angry about what's happening right now, or maybe you're just overflowing with gratitude. All of that, all of that can pour out of you. And that's what it means to pray. That's what it means to commune with God. So I hope you'll do that. And I hope that you'll know that God is with you as you pray, and that God is with you always, right where you are. Beloved one, Where hearts and spirits are breaking, come close. Remember the cries of the forgotten and lift the voices of the silenced. Let no one be abandoned to ordinary evil and stir all who slumber before injustice. Keep us awake to the needs of our neighbors, we pray. Amen. Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God, Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because they have dealt bountifully with me. Psalm 13 simply, yet very poetically, intersects with our lives today somehow. And these these few short verses, we have here a pattern of life that has carried people from one generation to the next, to the next generation. And that rhythm is lament and faith and fear and trust. It is a beautiful rhythm of a faith story. Now, for the last three months, our faith story has been, well, my goodness, (laughs) what has it been? It has been a time of transformation for the world. This pandemic has begun a transformation that for many people in their lives, they are finding it is a new way to change. For many, our, our eyes have been opened to the, the depth and the wideness of the systemic racism that 
plagues this nation. Our ears hear the cries of the needy, the cries of sadness and grief, amplified to an extreme abrasive level like they never have before. And our hearts have been touched by the continuing, enlarging pleas for justice that we are hearing. And our minds, our minds have been expanded for new thoughts and a new perspective and a new way to hear history that's been written and left unwritten. And we are tired. And so we lament. Now, First Church, like many other churches, has been called to go back to normal. For some, this thought seems like it's like perfection. Just go back, go back to where we were safe and we knew what was gonna happen. And, and God will see us through, God will see us through because that's what our faith says to believe, right? But for many, normal wasn't working. The systems that we live in are broken and they're not working and they have been causing fear for many. And in this season of transition, for those who want to go back to normal, these new steps are very scary and exhausting. And we hear, how long, O oh Lord, will you forget me? This is constantly what it feels like for many people who have been marginalized for centuries. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget people of color who have been oppressed for generations and years, who have lived through and witnessed Jim Crow laws and that have been othered so many times and, and people of color who have been lynched and violence has invaded their lives. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget women? That even though we've been able to vote in this nation for a hundred years this year, still, still do not have equal rights and equal pay for a job done well. Women still have their lives controlled and choices made by men for women and their daughters. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget the immigrants who are seeking safety and opportunity and have been separated by, within their families for too long now? How long, O oh Lord, will you forget our LGBTQIA siblings seeking marriage, seeking legitimacy, seeking to answer a call or seeking fairness? How long, oh Lord, will you forget the trans women of color who are being murdered and no one takes notice? How long, oh Lord, will you forget about economic justice where the have-nots are just falling and falling and those that have are receiving so much in this income gap that's happening? How long, oh Lord, will you forget, will we forget the economic justice that's happening in our economy? How long, O oh Lord, will we forget that our criminal justice system is not fair? This system puts people of color behind bars and in prison faster than it does that of whites. And how long, O oh Lord, will you forget the police brutality that is happening in our nation, where bad police officers are not being held accountable for killing young men and women. How many names, O oh Lord, do we have to list and name and remember who have lost their life? How long, O oh Lord, will you forget about those who suffer with mental health, anxiety, and they cannot begin, they cannot begin to have care for them provided because they are uninsured, or mental health is just ignored in our society. And our lament turns to fear that we have been abandoned. 
How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? Have you ever been there when lament turns to faith and then our faith fails us and we turn to fear because we feel as if we've been forgotten or abandoned? COVID-19 continues a long lament for me. I keep asking God, are you there, God? Where's the answer? How, How is this going to be fixed? But the psalmist puts in perspective for me somewhat what it feels like when our faith leads to feelings of abandonment. When we have been entrenched with COVID-19 for 15 weeks now, it may feel like some invisible enemy has won, that we have just been handed over with no intervention from God whatsoever to the worldly ways. Friends, it is here, it is here in that step, in that place, where we are ready to take the first steps of trust. It is here in our despair. It is here in our darkness. This is where we will meet God face to face, like Moses on the mountain, or in that cave where the still, small voice of God was heard. Here is where we meet God face to face. And in our fear, we say again, Help me, God. Come and change this, God. Fix this. But even when our struggles continue, we turn to God and we say, God, we need justice. We need healing. We need comfort. And we need freedom. But the struggle still continues. Psalm 13 reminds us reminds us that we are not the first to lament the world around us, that we are not the first to have faith that seems to fail us. We are not the first to fear. We are called to trust God. Even when the world distracts us and calls us away, Psalm 13 reminds us that God is faithful, even when it appears that God is not. Psalm 13 reminds us, even when the world says that God is wrong, that we can trust God. Amen and amen. God takes on flesh. This is how divine presence manifests among us. May we be willing partners in the holy work of love, inviting God to move in us, among us, between us. In commitment to this sacred calling, let us bring what we have together that we might practice justice in the sharing of our resources. Holy One, through the prayers of our neighbors, we are held accountable to our actions and beliefs. We hope to respond to pain with openness to change. We hope to prioritize justice in this aching world. We hope to be a part of mending the wrongs that have been done. Let these offerings be blessed to your work of transformation, and may your grace lead our way. Amen. Receive this benediction. Do not hesitate to feel what you need to feel. Do not be afraid to bring your pleas to God. 
On this shared journey, there is room and need for it all. God companions us in the highs and the lows. God delights in the intimacy of our honest expressions. May we, with hopes of fostering love and furthering justice, practice such care with each other and all our neighbors. The Spirit sends us with peace to make it so. Amen and amen. wants to be in every single video this week. I will call upon the Lord. <laughs>